Hey friends, hey crew. Wow, we've got a lot of catching up to do. So where have we been? Well, we've been, been dealing with family stuff. You know, if you've watched us for a while, um, you know my mum's struggling with dementia and that's an ongoing um, issue that we got to deal with. And then we had the very sad news that Shell's dad had a stroke um, and was hospitalized for three or four weeks. Um, then caught COVID in hospital and yeah, that's been a nightmare. Touch wood, thankfully he's recovering well and he's out of hospital now. And um, yeah, life, eh? Not the greatest at the minute, but keep on keeping on. And in the midst of all that, we had the um, mural project in Chester for Shell, and I've been working my ass off um, overtime wise to get some money together to start building the studio. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been quite hectic, quite a strain, quite a struggle, but that's life, huh? There's a lot more people worse off than we are. So the mooring, how's that going? Well, the mooring is awesome and it's it's been very, we've been very grateful for it with everything that's been going on. Um, we've managed to grow some of our own veg, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, actually eating our own veg, totally organic, no pesticides. That's a lovely feeling. Um, the, yeah, we've just been enjoying the mooring really, but we've made some quite significant changes. So wait for the traffic to go past. I'll I'll take you through those in a moment. Big things are we've taken the shed thing outhouse down. started painting the boat. Best go outside and show you all this, isn't it? Yes, yeah, good girl. He's a good girl. Me, oh, what's that? <laughs> I'm gonna play ball. Now the weather's a bit cooler. Eh? I'm gonna be a good girl. So one of the significant changes is we've um, so the field that we used to go in quite a lot that you've seen us in where we were getting the wood from that's now got um, year old heifers in it um, which are going to be in there for probably till about September so this field right behind us so let me show you context so this is the mooring and then this is the field behind us, which is Luna's play field. But it's great. You can go, you can go down to the bottom of the field, and there's a circular walk. It's about a five-mile circular walk that brings you back on the towpath and a back round. So it's perfect. So the other thing. We've now got canoe storage. I really have built this purely to hold the wood. So we got a load of wood off our wonderful neighbour John. Um, it's like absolutely loads, which we'll obviously utilise in the shed build. Um, but yeah, that's all pretty good wood. I'm trying to keep it dry. This is obviously the old shed. Um, a lot of it is like absolute rubbish, but I'm going to keep it until we can confirm we don't need it and we'll just use it for kindling. So a little update on the wains. They've uh, now got every, every there they are, survived the, uh, the heat wave, thankfully should have some um, 
plant feed from them pretty soon when we get back. So the biggest thing is the polytunnel. Don't think we've ever have we shown you that properly. But yeah, so this is the veg patch. Yeah, so we've done pretty well with the uh, the veg really. The one thing is we've had a constant battle with the uh, ant nest in here. So I'm gonna have to try and sort that out for next year. So any tips on getting rid of ants, let me know. Um, but yeah, proper chuffed with these, which are um, butternut squash, which we just planted the, uh, the seeds out of, one that we ate. So I'm really hoping they come to fruition. Most importantly, um, Caravello Nero, which is kale variety, which is this. Um, I mean, charge extortion amounts for it and saying, well, in supermarkets. But yeah, it's been dead easy grow. Proper chuffed with that, proper chuffed. Sorry, just hiding from the uh, the wind a little bit. Hope that isn't too bad. Um, but the biggest change. Yep, we're painting the boat. So this is just the undercoat um, so far. The top, we're just going to keep dark blue, and then we've gone satin black all along the gunnels. Um, and we're doing that primarily just so it's ease of maintenance really. Um, obviously as you know at some point we'd like to go continuous cruising. Hopefully trading from the boat but that's like two three year plan. Um, but we are we have got our mind on that so the decisions we make at the minute sort of based on that really. So yeah, that's been a hell of a job. So I think someone's happier now. She can go out in the day and play. Obviously we've kept her in the last couple of days because of the heat wave. But um, yeah. No real updates on Looney. She's um, still bringing us absolute joy every day. Couldn't have, couldn't have wished for better. For a better little puppy as a boat dog. She's amazing. So yeah, I bought myself a scabbler off um, eBay. It's like 120 quid. I was thinking, I didn't hold much hope for it to be honest, but um, some of the reviews were pretty good. Um, and it was awesome. So I've heard of um, scabbler, but I always thought it was scrabbler. I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, scabbler. It is actually a concrete polisher. Who knew? Um, and yeah, it's a bit tricky get um, used to using it. It's quite a daunting bit of kit. And we have lost quite a lot of teeth. Um, I think so that's down to my ignorance in using it initially. Um, but we got in a rhythm um, and wow. If you've got layers and layers of paint on your narrow boat or any anything really, this thing just takes it back to the bare metal in seconds. It's incredible. So it took me probably two hours to do the to do half the roof. We haven't done the half of the solar panels. I think that may be next year's job. Um, it'd be nice to get everything done this year, but uh, with everything that's going on, it ain't gonna happen. Um, so yeah, Scabbler, what an awesome bit of kit. I've ordered some new teeth, which are about, about the same price as the bloody machine, which is a bit disappointing, but there you go. Um, 
but now I know how to use it a little better. Scabler tip section is it sort of runs on a cushion of air, so it's got a skirt around it, and obviously when you turn it on, it sort of rests. So just let the machine do the work. Don't push down with it. I think where I was pushing down with it, that's when the teeth were sort of hitting into the into the metal. Um, I would show it you, but it's at my mum's now. Which leads us nicely on to... So yeah, I'm very excited about that, seeing what Shell comes up with. Um, I think that'll be a vlog in its own right. So yeah, that's pretty much up to date with everything that's been going on. Yeah, there's one mad Saturday I managed to get rid... Take the shed down, get the scabbler out, get the first layer of... Um, anti-rust stuff on. I've been using a product called Aqua Steel, which is just phenomenal. Um, I'll put a list of um, links to things that I've mentioned in the description below. Um, I think that's it. That's pretty much it, really. Plans for the next three or four weeks. Oh, the shell's going to kill me. Look, that's the uh, octopus with all our knickers and pants on <laughs> she's at work bless her but if she was here she'd be going what on earth are you doing filming with all this <laughs> anyway ah, you're not here so um right future plans we were going to be out for four weeks but it's now going to be three weeks so this is the itinerary so week one we're going to be moored in Northwich. That's because my brother and sister are both away, so we're going to be like primary care for mum, which is cool. So hopefully, um, we'll get some stuff done, finish painting the boat primarily. Week two. Oh no, I'm going to run it. Part of it, week one will hopefully be a marine survey for Peel Ports who are the owners and keepers of the Manchester Ship Canal. Oh yeah. So week two, we are gonna go down the Anderton boat lift and onto the Weaver and spend a leisurely week on the Weaver, doing lots of arty crafty stuff and hopefully murals on the bow. End of week two, we will hopefully be exiting Marsh Lock at the end of the Weaver, no, at the end of the Weaver navigation, going up the Manchester Ship Canal to Ellesmere Port, getting off Ellesmere, going through the Ellesmere Museum, which we want to spend the day at, and then coming back down the Shropshire Union Canal through Chester, back to Golden Nook. So that'll be sort of end of week two, week three so it's like uh, inaugural inaugural trip of the Chris and Shell loop <laughs> as we're well we haven't called it that we're not that night uh, we're not that um, so yeah shared ownership boat or a higher boat you can't go on the Manchester ship canal you just can't there's no ifs buts wise so it's not a regular route um, so that's good. It's exciting. Manchester Ship Canal is daunting but exciting. I remember watching Minimalist when they went from, I think they went from Ellesmere all the way to Manchester with um, David from Cruising the Cut and Lorna from London Boat Girl. And it, although it's quite boring in parts, just the landscape, it's pretty flat. The industry and, and the fact that you're on the Manchester Ship Canal and the fact that it's like, you know, people don't do it. And they don't do it because it is partially a bit of a pain in the ass. And there should be, should be quite a lot of interesting content in the next few weeks. Like, less of me waffling on kind of content. <coughs> so, um, 
Sorry if this is a bit awkward. It seems weird filming again. I was so used to it and then it's sort of gone again, which is why we've been really hesitant about picking up the camera. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll be back a bit. We're back, back in the groove. But gotta say, um, things change. Things have changed quite a lot recently, so yeah, we're going to try and be regular, but we can't guarantee it. So, until the adventure begins, until probably cut to a bit of boat painting, I think, before we leave. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Um, if you're new around here, then please do subscribe. It really does make a difference to us. Um, and stay afloat. Look after yourself, and most importantly, love yourself and everybody around you. But love yourself. And we'll see you next week. Or in a bit. No idea when I'll see you. But have fun until then. Bye.